Ahoy everyone! Welcome back to Scratch's Director's Cut. You find me here in the backyard at 11am, as my save file tells me. And before we get into this episode, I actually have some very exciting news that I'd like to share. If you'd like, you can go ahead and skip ahead, but all the same, there is a giveaway involved at the end, so... Uh, be tuned to figure out more about the first official Vote for Holt giveaway. A YouTube commenter by the name of McQuiggan commented only a couple hours after the upload of the first part of Scratches, telling me that she was actually part of the Scratches production team and was one of the developers who oversaw this game and is currently working with the studio to make a new game called Asylum, which they described as a spiritual successor to Scratches, which, needless to say, has my attention because only two parts into this game, starting my third now, I am very, very interested in it. And she said that she really appreciated my commentary and critique of the game so far, and even that Augustin Cordes, the lead producer of this game, sends his regards, which low-key made my heart skip a beat because I thought that was super, super cool. But McQuiggan also helped me learn a little bit more about why this game was so difficult to get my hands on in the first place. As it turns out, the publisher of Scratches went out of business not long after the Director's Cut was put on Steam, or maybe even before it. Regardless, the Director's Cut was only available for a number of weeks before it had to be taken down. In short, since the publisher is out of business, Scratches Director's Cut and Scratches the original is in IP hell and cannot be sold since the publisher doesn't really exist anymore. Unfortunately, this means that there are only two ways that Scratches can be obtained now. First way is to get the game through retail. That would not be the director's cut. It would probably be the original version of the game on CD, and you could buy it still off Goodwill or eBay or any other retailer. Usually goes between $10 to $15 if I had to hazard a guess. Alternatively, if you happen to be as lucky as I am, you could stumble across one of the developers who is always happy to distribute the game to as many people as they can and stumble across a key to download the game for free off of Steam for free, no transaction required, no legal ramifications due with the publisher that's gone out of business. And that is exactly what McQuiggan has generously offered to the Vote for Whole community. So, I have been given one key for a free download of Scratches off of Steam. Keep in mind that this is a very exclusive offer, because this is actually the only way that you can obtain Scratches digitally and legally. And McQuiggan has been kind enough to give me a key, which I am gladly now going to bestow to one of you lucky viewers. So, what I think would be the most fair and equitable way to do this giveaway is if everyone who is interested in being a part of it would leave a comment down below on why they want Scratches, maybe fond memories they may have of the game, and if they hope to win. I will then take their usernames, enter it into a random number generator with a list of numbers, and at the end of the next episode, we will determine who wins our giveaway. And then I will contact them in a confidential way to give them their key, and they can have their free download of this game to play along with me, or maybe even beat it before I do, since I tend to take my time with a game this meticulous. Otherwise, I uh, hope you guys are excited about that news. I sure am. Augustin Cordes and your team, you made a fantastic gem here, and I'm so sorry to hear that it's gotten... It put into IP hell, as McQuiggan put it. So, all the same, I wish the best to you and your team with the debut of Asylum, and I will certainly keep myself and the channel updated about the production of that game. Without further ado, I think it's time to go ahead and jump back into this episode, and uh, stay tuned for the giveaway, guys, because I'm honestly really excited to share this experience with someone more. It's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. So, uh, let's get back into the house now. Where we left off last, there were still a number of unknown variables we were still trying to figure out. A uh, tantamount of which being the books that were listed from the museum curator's note, which are somewhere in this house, I'm assuming. And then also some phone calls we needed to make and an electrician who was supposed to be here, but has not yet shown up. So maybe we will begin with that. Uh, phone calls is probably a good way to start because phone calls is kind of just a general way to keep on top of, t keep on top of tasks in this game. And of course, as I learned from last time, we should also keep an eye open at all times for any new places we may have not yet explored, because last time I discovered like four new areas, maybe five, that I was pretty sure I had already seen. So rest assured, this game is full of surprises. Alright, let's give the phone a whirl. to speak with Jerry or Barbara. Let's start with Jerry, because I don't know if Barbara's ever going to answer. Oh, no answer out of Jerry. That's too bad. Uh, Barbara, then. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Hello, Arthur here. 
Hey! Are they productions? What in heaven's name was that? Oh, hi, boss. I was just feeling around. Well, don't. I don't want people thinking I'm some kind of studio. And don't call me boss. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just that no one was calling and all of a sudden I got excited. I told you it was going to be that way, girl. But I still need you there. I just hope you're not being bored to death. Oh, don't worry. I'm studying tongues during my spare time. I love that so much. That's great, but don't lower your guard. As soon as I publish my new book, that place is going to get riddled with phone calls and hundreds of fan mail. Boss. I know your new book is going to be a huge success. Of course it will. <clears throat> as soon as I find a proper ending. Ooh. And stop calling me boss. As you wish, boss. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Goodbye. Good luck. Alright, sounds like Barbara is our secretary or publicist or something like that. And, uh, she was just kind of bored, hanging around. We didn't really have anything for her. But we did just learn that we apparently don't have an ending to our highly anticipated novel we're writing. So that could spell disaster for us. Let me just keep on having a look around. Yeah, okay, there's nothing in here. Uh, let's have a quick look outside. I still am holding on to hope that maybe we're just going to run into this electrician we've heard so much about. There we go. Doors in this game can be a little finicky. The lighting definitely seems to change more and more every time I go outside. Definitely gives a feel of progression, like the day's progressing. Uh, so we have the shed, and... Was there something over there? No, okay, I mislooked. There was still no sign of the electrician. Really? So, at least Michael is acknowledging that this electrician should be here. And I'm not just going crazy. Uh, real quick, we don't have anything we can use to get into here, right? Because I know we did find some new things. Um, I think this is just a piece of paper. Okay. I managed to reveal what appeared to be a letter. Oh, hold up. Oh, okay, I accidentally just did something really important. Okay, so that piece of paper, I'm assuming, was part of a notepad that had a letter etched onto it. And I was impossible to read it until I accidentally shaded it in with this pencil. So this is a game where you combine things in your inventory to solve little puzzles. And so now it appears that we have actually uh, undeciphered a letter. Or not deciphered yet, because I think he said it was written in Italian. So uh, there's no way really yet of knowing how to do that. Let's see. Uh, let me try the knife. Is the knife just going to cut through the chain somehow? No, I could have hurt myself. Okay, that's pretty smart of you, actually. You never want to force a knife. Oh, we still have some more entries here. Um, the last thing is, I managed to reveal a letter that seems to be in Italian. I'm curious about it, so I should try to find a way to translate it. Well, uh, there could be a Italian to English dictionary in that big library of his. I can't think of anything else we would use. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's get back in the house and start poking around more the second and third floor. Because we only gave that a cursory look to begin with. Maybe we'll find some more spooky kooky lore entries, too. Somebody commented, actually, uh, about the painting that I saw. It was, um, The Sacrifice of Isaac, I think. The one with Moses- uh, with Abraham, not Moses. Or Noah, for that matter. Three biblical figures I always confuse for each other. But, um, yeah. Okay, that's the gallery there. I don't want to go in there ever again. But yeah, uh, that was the uh, Sacrifice of Isaac was the title of that painting, and it is a famous Italian painter whose name I don't remember. <laughs> so sorry. That is a really creepy painting. What the hell? <laughs> Everything else in this game has been like actually, you know, imported art from somewhere. This is just freaky. That one's not even a person. That's a doll. And the hands in the back. Yeah. That's freaky. Okay, back upstairs. So, I'm guessing I missed something up here. We had a locked door still, didn't we? The door seemed to be... Okay, that door was stuck, and then there's somewhere else there was a door that was locked. 
Wait, I'm curious. Can I, like, jimmy my knife in the door to open it? I might do that for a stuck door in real life. No, I could have hurt myself. Alright, okay, if that's fair still. Door was locked, but I could see a key on the other side to the keyhole. Is there any way I can maneuver that magnifying glass, maybe? Um, push the pencil through the lock? Too big to fit in the keyhole. Okay, so we are supposed to, we are supposed to put something in there. I didn't have a need to write on that. This perhaps? No, I could have hurt myself. I'm curious real quick. Can I combine more things in my inventory that I didn't think before? No point in writing an address on it until I had something to mail. Wait. Oh, are we going to... Is this an empty envelope? Are we going to mail this letter? I certainly needed some help with the letter, but who should I have mailed it to? Oh, so we're going to have that letter mailed to figure out what it is. All right. No dictionary is necessary. That gives me something to do. Uh, maybe Barbara could do it for us. We'll give her a call and see if she'd be up for the challenge. Yeah, I'm going to say there's nothing in here. It's just literally nothing in that room. And then real quick, we'll give the attic one more sweep since it's uh, a very meticulously put together room with lots and lots of things in it. Oh, hello. Is there writing all over? No, okay, it's bricks. I thought there was writing on the wall. Uh, how about newspaper clippings? Is there anything important on the floor? Oh, look at this. The pile of newspapers is huge. I needed a specific date to look for. So we're supposed to find something in here. But we don't know what it is yet. This way, right? Yep. I'm a genius at navigating. Never mind, this is the wrong room. <laughs> okay. Barbara, I have something for you to translate. Hello? Hey, it's me, Bobby, dear. I need to ask you a favor. Bring it on. I found a letter here, and I'm curious about it. It's in Italian. Do you think you could translate it for me? My, Mr. Athwaite, are we being naughty? <laughs> Mrs. Stiles. as soon as I have it here. Excellent. Hmm. I wonder if the postman will come by. I feel like I'm the last person alive on the whole planet here. But have you told the post office in Rothbury that you're moving to Blackwood Manor? Yes, Jerry did. I just hope they don't forget about me, that's all. In any case, thank you. You're such a dear. That's what I'm here for. Actually, that's what I'm paying you for. Anyway, I'll go and try mailing that letter. I'll be standing by for action. Thanks. Goodbye. Excellent. So, she actually did hint towards that pretty well earlier when she said that she was studying tongues. Uh, so, yeah, now we have something we can do in our inventory, I'm hoping. Let's go ahead and uh, just drag this to that. Is it going to be that simple? Okay, sealed envelope. And now we, I guess we'll want to do ink, write the address. Nice, that looks like a letter ready to go. Unless we need stamps, too. That's a possibility. Still no electrician. How about that? Okay, well, do we have a mailbox somewhere? I'm assuming it'd be outside the gate. Still no sign of the electrician. Okay. Is this it? Oh, look at this! We do have a mailbox, and there's already mail in it. Well, that certainly wasn't a smooth start. Mr. Arthrate, Mr. Carter sent me here today to fix a power problem in your residence. I was told to meet you at the gates, but I've been waiting a few minutes and still haven't seen any signs of you. I will wait some more and then leave. Please contact Mr. Carter as soon as possible. Damn it, we missed the electrician. Well, that's better than the game just forgetting about him. Let's go ahead and throw this letter in here. And now it sounds like we're going to have to give Jerry a call. That really is a shame, though. I was kind of looking forward to seeing this pretty old house with uh, electricity. At least we still have the phone working. You'd better answer this time. <laughs> the game literally told me to call you. Carter Properties. Jerry, we have a problem. What happened? <sighs> the electrician missed me. He left a note in the mailbox. Bloody hell. He was supposed to meet you at the gates early this morning. I thought he was just being late. Damn. 
that I must have missed him for a few minutes. What the heck am I supposed to do now? Why don't you go check the fuses yourself? Maybe it isn't that serious. I don't know. I'm not very good with that kind of thing. Michael, even my grandmother could improvise a fuse. Just go and look and let me know if you see anything burnt. <sighs> As in black spots? Yes, black spots. All right, I'm on it. So he wants us to try to figure it out for ourselves? Hang on, let me check my notes. I, I spaced out a little bit there. Okay. He asked me to look for black spots at the circuit breaker, I think. Figure out if I blew a fuse. Would that be outside or in the basement? We know that there's a basement door in, attached to the kitchen. We just don't have a key for it. Maybe in the backyard I can find it? Attached to the side of the house? Or maybe the front yard for that matter. Well, I'm assuming that he told me to go check the circuit breaker, and if this house is anything like the one I live in, that's probably in the basement. But we don't have a key to the basement. So, uh, I guess... We'll have to pick up another tangent for now. How about this room? We never really looked at much of stuff in this room. Always wanted to be a pianist, yep. Nothing in these drawers. What is this thing? Oh, it's, a, it's the stethoscope, isn't it? Alright. That could be useful for something. Nothing in the fireplace. <laughs> the fireplace had a generous amount of wood in it, and I was relieved to know that I could warm the place up in case it got cold. I'm certainly not good at chopping trees. Yeah, but no uh, Zeke's Curio Shop receipts in there, no? I wondered how long that cup of coffee had been sitting there. There's still coffee in the cup? Ugh. I feel like if that was decades old, it might have evaporated, which leads me to believe it's not decades old and someone's been drinking it. Oh, there's a book here. Ooh, more reading. Uh, how long is this one? Okay, not as long as the last one. He says, the diary disturbed me in a way I couldn't explain, yet I felt curious about what had been tormenting that poor fellow. Okay, we're giving this a quick read. So, this will take a couple of minutes probably, but I'm still gonna read it. <laughs> April 20th. During a fit of rage, I burnt my previous diary. Not that I regret it, as if my disjointed notes were worth anything. Their only purpose was to keep me sane. I feel that this is my escape route, my only means of finding some inner peace. Whenever I put my pen to this paper, I feel that I can reflect upon my situation. I just wish I had more options, that's all. But I'm rambling. I must think clearly. Focus, focus. May 12th. I've become an eternal guardian, stuck between a few choices, none of which are good. Do I fulfill a promise and violate everything that I believe in, the very principles of my life, or am I condemned to spend the rest of my existence in this dead-end state, a ghost with no other purpose than just being here watching? I truly have no escape. I can't find an appropriate solution to this problem, and I must pay the price. I'm a shadow of the man I used to be. Only these notes remain, my testament in these moments of meditation, my sole companion. June 26th. Today I spent the entire afternoon staring at the window, my mind a blank. Oddly enough, I really didn't care. It seems now as though it was something natural for me, a part of my personality. But I know the reason very well. I've lost my soul. I'm an empty shell. Devoid of any feelings, I renounced them on that fateful day. And the worst thing is, I knew there were going to be consequences. No, no, that's not true. Consequences were far worse than I expected. How could I be so blind? January 25th. That's almost six, that's six months after the last entry. I often wonder what would have happened if I had simply reversed it all. What would happen if right now, 
I come out and told the world what really happened. No, I'd end up rotting in jail. Although, that might be a better destiny compared to this eternal suffering. November 17th, almost a, nine months later. I can't say for sure when it began. I just heard them one morning, coming from the next room. The whispers. Are they real? Have I been alone for too long? They won't stop. I can't stand it any longer. February 9th. Ever since I locked it away, that thing seems to have calmed down a little bit. Perhaps James was right after all. Oh, so he just mentioned James. This must have been the doctor then who lived here after him. Perhaps James was right after all. It's madness, I know. But at this point, I'd be inclined to believe anything. I'll come back to that entry when we finish. I have some thoughts about it. Over the years, I was convinced that everything James suffered was a misfortune, a whim of destiny. For the first time ever, I'm not so sure anymore. I never thought it could happen, but I believe I understand now. If this is so, then cursed be my soul. Poor James. If I had acted in another way, then maybe things would have worked out differently. But it's too late now, and I have to suffer my, my calvary. That's a... Another great literary tool there. Calvary, not to be mistaken with cavalry, which is a very similar word, was the name of the hill that Christ was crucified on. And so that's a, a pretty uh, unknown biblical reference. I think the other word for it is Golgotha, or maybe I'm wrong about that. September 13th. The noises are back, although this time they're different. Before, I'd only heard them inside my head, as if someone or something was whispering. And how to put this interrupting my thoughts. But now, I can really feel them spreading around the house. What are they? September 14th. I've realized the noises are coming from down there. I don't want to think about it anymore. December. It's misspelled. And not even giving a day. They are unbearable. They get worse at night. Oh, how I wish it would stop. What is going on down there? I don't dare go nearer. I don't want to know. Ooh. He started writing March, then crossed it out and wrote May. God, how many years have passed. I have lost all sense of time. I have to get out of this place. Wow. So the doctor had a... Uh... A similar spiraling out of control, it seems, to the previous inhabitant, which would be James, who we know had an obsession with a mask and South African culture. And reading this, when he writes down here in February 9th, ever since I locked it away that everything seems to have calmed down a bit, I think he's talking about the mask. And I think he locked it away in the one display case in the gallery that we could not open. I think that ritualized bloodletting mask is stuck in that damn drawer, and I hate to think about it, and it gives me chills. Ugh. Well done. So, that just emboldens my convictions even more now. It's totally up there. <sighs> to say nothing else of all the other art in this place. I mean, he's got chandeliers in the ceilings. I, I'm surprised that there aren't more uh, South African-style paintings in the game. It's only just, uh, you know, kind of renaissance -y stuff. Light switches still don't work, I take it. Yeah. I don't know why they would. I mean, these vases look kind of renaissance. More renaissance than everything else. See, these vases look more like they have... Oh, okay, close the blinds. That's right, I forgot the blinds could do that. These vases have more of a South African craftsmanship. Yeah, look at that. Oh, what the... There was a key in that one! Finally, we have a key! Yep, yep, new key. That's, that's insanely hype. I'm so pissed that I didn't find that immediately. That should have been so easy. God, why didn't... There's so many vases in this game. Of course they were going to put something in one of them. Okay, but what does it open? Um, there's the cellar. There's the locked room upstairs. I really hope it's the locked room upstairs. Let's do that one first. Because, uh, <laughs> I don't want to go to the cellar, man. I really don't. Um... It's down the hall this way. And then there's the crypt and the church and the shed. 
Well, the door's locked, but I could see... Okay, so there's already a key in this one. That's right. And this isn't gonna... The key didn't... Okay, God, it's, this... it's the key to the cellar, isn't it? I really don't want it to be, but I feel like it is. Okay. I really hope that the cellar is also not the down there that the doctor was referring to in terms of where the voices and sounds were coming from. Uh, this is going to be like Evil Dead all over again. Alright. Please just be a closet. The golden key fit nicely into place and unlocked the door. Please be a closet. Please be a closet. Please be a closet. That's not a closet, and I hate that noise. Oh, come on. Come the fuck on. Come on, no. Southeastern and Chatham Railway. Cooks. Is that. that? Please tell me that's the soundtrack, because that's genuinely freaking me out. It was terribly cold and damp in the basement. Okay, well, at least it's small. There's no corners for anything to hide behind. We have an old boiler system. Is this the circuit breaker? There was a huge furnace covering most of the east wall. I didn't understand why, but I began to feel terribly uneasy. It had a menacing look to it. Oh my god, the, the music is dizzying in here. The atmosphere was dense and claustrophobic, yeah. They were just some uninteresting boxes. Is there nothing in here important? There was a drain cover in the concrete? The valve was stuck and wouldn't budge. The music is getting louder. I... I'm... <laughs> okay, I'm actually going upstairs. <laughs> Please tell me this is gonna reset the music. Oh my god. Okay, let's try that again. Does that, like, reset the audio? Okay, yes, it's not as loud anymore. Old Town, Parade Stars... Cooks Conducted Bridges... My mind could have been playing tricks on me, but there seemed to be some occasional distant noise. I hate that. We've been here one day and we're already experiencing what the doctor did after spending years of his life here. Okay, is there nothing important down here? Because I, <laughs> I don't want to be down here any longer than I have to. What's this thing? This must be the breaker. There appeared to be nothing wrong with the fuses. Okay. Okay, yeah, we flipped them both. Nothing happened. Uh, nothing else in here. There's the creepy furnace. How about in this corner? Suddenly, I felt a very cold breeze on my neck. And it was then that I realized I wanted to leave the basement as soon as possible. You and me both, Michael. Oh my god. Okay, okay, we're getting out. The, the, the thing was fine. The thing was totally fine. Get the, he get the hell out of the cellar. Oh. Uh, there's, a, there's a horror guy. I think it was either James Wan or Eli Roth. and uh, Both are big horror movie guys. I know James Wan did like, all the Conjuring or uh, movies, stuff like that. And I forget what Eli Roth did. I, th I think it was Roth. Roth said that if you want to make a movie not scary... Cover your ears, not your eyes. And, uh... I, I think that's pretty well expressed in me wanting to get the hell out of the basement solely because of the soundtrack. Key holder. Okay, I wonder... Was that the key, then, to the basement that we saw in the picture? Or maybe that was a different key yet. Who knows? Uh, let's go find... Let's, let's call Jerry now. Tell him that there's nothing wrong with the fuses. And we don't know why the electricity won't work. Something you can do. I 
I don't feel comfortable walking around this place with dim lights. I barely know it. Michael, come on. Where's your sense of adventure? <laughs> you look at me like you were living in a past century. Exquisite Victorian house, lit by candles. What I wouldn't give to be in your place. I left my sense of adventuring back in London, thanks. I have work to do. Then do it. What else could you ask for? Now you have the chance to experience firsthand one of your period pieces. Oh, very funny. Try getting that guy over here as soon as possible. Don't worry, I will. Make sure you find some candles before it gets too dark. Yes, candles. Bye. Jerry, we've already been to this place like four different times. There's no candles anywhere. I would have seen them. Answer the phone. We need something better than that. Yes? Jerry, I'm freaking out. I couldn't find a single candle inside this place. You're kidding me. I can't believe it. Did you look well? Yes, every single room, drawer, box, cabinet, nothing. No candles. All right, listen. The town isn't too far away. No more than 20 minutes drive. If you can't find some candles there, I'll eat my hat. You'll eat your whole closet. This is getting on my nerves. Come on, it's just a quick ride. You know how to get there? Yeah, I saw it on my way here. Did you call Mr. Busy Electrician, who couldn't hold on for just five more minutes? Yes, he'll be doing me another special favor, and we'll be going there tomorrow afternoon. It's the best he can do. You have to bear in mind it's Sunday. We'll charge extra, of course. I don't care. I have no power. I'll get him myself if he doesn't show up. Calm down. Drive to the town before it gets too dark. You won't be able to find your way back if it does. Yeah, I had to buy some food anyway. There you go. Godspeed. And drive safe. So we're going to the town now? We're actually gonna get to leave? Huh. Looks like the game wanted me to go explore the house and make sure that there were no candles anywhere. Which I had already done multiple times, but just without knowing I was supposed to be looking for candles that didn't exist. So uh, I'm glad that's taken care of at least, and I don't have to go on a wild goose chase. So we're just gonna get out of here? Let's open the gate first. Okay, uh, just, we put the keys in the ignition, don't we? Is it that simple? This is your car key, right? The key didn't fit there? Is this the keyhole? There we go. Alright, so we're actually going to the town? Oh no. The car would not start. It was only then that I realized I had left the lights on. Michael, you dumbass! The battery was dead. No! No, Michael, how could you? You're literally a horror author! How do you be manage to be this unprepared living in the middle of nowhere? This is... Oh, shit. The sky's red now. We're going into evening, aren't we? Oh, man. Michael, you had better find some lamp oil somewhere, because we are in for a dark, cold night otherwise.